Right, so this video covers the uh, equilibrium topic um, from Unit 2 of the AQA AS Chemistry uh, specification. Um, this is a topic that can often give people um, a, a bit of a hard time, but actually it's, it's quite straightforward, particularly when you actually realise that there are certain answers that AQA seem to want every time. If you look through past mark schemes, you'll see that there are answers that come across time and time and time again, and actually that then tells you exactly really kind of what you've got to write. And I'm going to go through some of that in this video and I'm going to start off with what equilibrium is um, going through into this idea of Le Chatelier's principle uh, and then looking at changing equilibrium um, and how we can answer questions based on that. Um, finally kind of ending on a bit of a, a bit of an idea of what's called compromise so um, particularly looking at the, uh, the harbour process which although isn't sort of expressly talked about I don't believe in the in there so I think it's quite a good one to um, to look at because there are parts that come up every now and again. So equilibria. Um, imagine we've got a reaction. Okay, and this reaction is one between um, A and B. Uh, and what we do is we have this funny symbol, and we have C and D. Now this is reaction than A and B, and we you can say it's producing C and D. What we have is this funny symbol here, where we have an arrow going this way, and we have an arrow going this way. Now what this means is that this arrow going forward is that the reaction can go that way. But this backward action arrow means the reaction can also go that way. So whilst A and B produce C and D, so that therefore means that we have A and B producing C and D, it also means that we have C and D reacting to produce A and B. And I sometimes don't think people truly understand what's actually occurring here, that we have that reaction occurring and that reaction. Um, so what is equilibrium then? Well, an equilibrium is, is defined, first of all, sort of in, in terms of an equation by this reversible reaction sign. This doesn't mean that something is at equilibrium, it means that reaction is reversible. For something to be at equilibrium, it must be in a closed system. Um, that to say nothing can enter or leave. So, realistically, you know, a sealed container of some sort would do, um, that would be a, a, an ample closed system. It doesn't have to be some sort of military lockdown underground Area 51. It could just be something very, very straightforward, just seal container, seal test tube, for example. Um, but that's a closed system. Now, an examiner's favourite question, almost on equilibria. They absolutely love this. Um, what give two, give two um, conditions or give two properties of a, of a of an equilibrium or something? Like the wording of that's terrible, but give two things or two things about a reaction that that are true at equilibrium, something like that. And basically what you've got is that once this has reached equilibrium, okay, and I'm assuming now that we are at this position of equilibrium, what's called a dynamic equilibrium. And it's dynamic because these reactions are both going on. It's not static. We've not got A and B, C and D just sat around waiting, some sort of weird game where as soon as one of them moves, they're gonna, something's going to happen. We've got this reacting to produce this and this reacting to produce this. So it's dynamic. But what happens is, because it's an equilibrium, the rate of forward and backward reactions are equal and that is very very important and well, the rat as it would seem the rate that's a really really important word if you don't put the rate if you just put the forward and backward reactions are equal you're not getting the mark it's got to be the rate because that implies the actual the, the occurrence of the forward and backward reactions. That's the important thing. That's the rate. Uh, the second one is that we're sitting at equilibrium now. Concentrations. Again, a word you must use. Concentrations um, of reactants and products. Are not changing. Okay, so that's two key things about this equilibrium, here. and that's true of any reaction or any reverse reaction which has which has been given the opportunity and which has reached equilibrium. Rate of forward and backward reactions are equal, and the concentration of reactants and products are not changing. Very, very important. Okay, so that takes us on to this idea. Then, well, we've got an equilibrium. Well, let's look at this idea of Le Chatelier's principle. So Le Chatelier's principle. Now, this was a guy who, um, I'm not even going to pretend that I know a lot about him, I, I would guess he was French, 
or something like that. Um, and he basically came up with this idea, and, and Le Chatelier's principle was essentially this, and, and I would say that you learn this, learn this word for word, um, because it has come up on the old exam question, what is Le Chatelier's principle? So, when a factor is changed, an equilibrium will shift. to oppose the change, to oppose that change, we'll say. Now, the key thing here, before we actually look at any, any information, so or any um, specific example, so when a factor is changed, an equilibrium will shift to oppose that change. Whatever happens, it will shift to undo it, basically. Now, the key thing is, it will not be able to undo it completely. It can't shift and just become something completely, but exactly back to where it was. It will always be different from the starting point, but it can reach equilibrium again, but at a different point. Um, and don't worry too much about what that actually sort of entails and how that kind of works, but the idea is the equilibrium can be reached, it can be adjusted, and then it can be reached again via this idea of um, the equilibrium shifting to oppose a change that's been made. And really, when we're talking about the change, uh, when a factor has changed, this... this um, Per here. So when a factor is changed, we're talking really about temperature or pressure. Now, some of you may have done this GCSE, um, uh, and for that reason, you might find this a very, very simple topic. You might need just a, bit, a quick bit of revision on it. Um, but certainly, there are there are A-level answers that you must be writing down. Otherwise, you are going to going to give away marks unless you just happen to fl kind of fluke your way through it. So we're talking about temperature or pressure change. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to a uh, delightful equilibrium and this is the formation of methanol um, so we've got CO2 uh, gas we've got got a lovely equilibrium sign CH3 OH uh, gas again that's our methanol and uh, then we are also given an enthalpy change this reaction which is incredibly important So, reaction between carbon dioxide and hydrogen to produce methanol and water. Right, with an enthalpy change there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, we'll look at temperature. If we change temperature, what I'm going to do is, and this is, the questions and exams tend to be of the nature of, um, for the following reaction, or for the, the reaction above, to produce methanol, um, the temperature was increased. How would this affect the yield of methanol? So, we're saying, temperature, I'll go the other way around, temperature decreased how did this affect the yield of methanol so yield of CH 3 OH okay temperature has been decreased how does that affect the yield of methanol so first thing let's think about what actually happens here so Le Chatelier old chap when a factor is changed the equilibrium will shift to oppose that change so I've decreased the temperature so the equilibrium is going to shift to increase the temperature. Again, it's not going to increase back to the point that it was at, but it will do a, a, a job at raising it. So I've decreased the temperature, the equilibrium is going to try and increase the temperature. Now it can only, and all an equilibrium can do, is it can shift the equilibrium position towards this side or towards this side. Another way of wording it is saying that it can favour this reaction or this reaction, although they like in exams for you to use the term equilibrium will shift in one direction or the other. The reason I've got this enthalpy change here is that this tells me that the forward reaction it has a, an enthalpy change of minus 49 kilojoules per mole, which tells me it's exothermic. So the forward reaction is exothermic. Now, if you think about it, the forward reaction being exothermic means that whenever the forward reaction occurs, energy is released. Now, it happens that the reverse reaction is endothermic by the same amount, but opposite. So it's, it's endothermic by... Um, it's plus 49 kilojoules per mole. So overall, there's no there's no energy change. The energy remains constant. But what I can do is that if I decrease the temperature of this whole equilibrium, and you would imagine this, I've decreased the temperature of this container that has this equilibrium in it, okay? I'm not decreasing the temperature of one side or the other. I'm decreasing the temperature of the entire system, which could just be the, the test tube that I'm using. So I decrease temperature. It wants to increase temperature. Now, the only way it can do that is by favouring the exothermic reaction. 
Okay, so it can shift in this direction, which means that this exothermic reaction, the exothermic portion, becomes this reaction to produce the methanol in the water becomes more dominant over the other one. They're both perhaps still still happening, and eventually will reach equilibrium. But initially, it will it can certainly boost this one. It shifts the equilibrium more in this direction, which means that we have this, um, if you like, a more exothermic um, overall sort of reaction. Therefore, energy is released to the environment. Therefore, the temperature increases. So, first thing to say in this situation is, well, what happens to the yield when the, the temperature is decreased? So, temperature decrease, if the temperature decreases, it's always going to favour the exothermic direction. So, it's going to go in that way. Well, in this case, exothermic is this way, meaning that I produce more of this thing. So, this is my methanol. So, yield increases. Now, other thing to say is that they might give you this information. You need to actually state it. So, the Ford reaction is exothermic. I'm just going to remove my box there. So the Ford reaction is exothermic. Therefore, equilibrium shifts to oppose the decrease in temperature. Now that there is a three mark answer. One mark, two mark, three mark. So whenever you're asked a question about temperature, always state whether the forward reaction, or you could, you could go the other way, I could say the forward reaction is exothermic, or I could have also answered it as the backward reaction is endothermic. Same is true. But I, always, I would always talk about the direction in terms of the direction we're talking about, the one we, we, we're actually thinking about. So my yield is going to increase because the react, forward reaction is exothermic, therefore meaning the equilibrium is going to shift. Um, sorry, I've missed a word here. I apologise about that. Equilibrium shifts right. No, it didn't quite look right. So the equilibrium shifts right to oppose a decrease in temperature. So it's favoured this reaction, if you like. It's shifted it this direction to oppose a decrease in temperature. So once more, yield is increased because the forward reaction is exothermic. Therefore, the equilibrium has shifted to the right to oppose the decrease in temperature. And what will happen is this, that this will actually increase the temperature. The temperature will actually increase as a result, uh, which, is quite, which is quite useful. Um, and obviously, therefore, the yield of this will increase. Now, we can take we can use this as we can basically take advantage of this of this whole sort of phenomenon, and um, we could purposely run this reaction at a lower temperature to give us a higher yield of methanol, uh, and that that would be absolutely fine. Now there are problems associated that with that, and I'll touch on those later, um, but that would be absolutely fine. With this same reaction, uh, let's say that I um, increase pressure. So pressure increase this time, and again yield of methanol. Now, the answer is it, it's not a million miles away from the last one. I need to answer about my yield, which in this case is going, is going to again be yield increases, and I'm going to look at why in a second. Um, the reason for that is that a mole of any gas, and notice these are all gases, a mole of any gas occupies the same volume, um, provided we're talking about the same pressure and all the rest. And at room temperature and pressure, the whole standard conditions, that's 24 decimeters cubed. So one mole of any gas occupies 24 decimeters cubed. If I've increased the pressure, the reaction, the equilibrium, the whole system is going to try and decrease the pressure to oppose the change, just as Le Chatelier said. So it will shift to oppose that change. So it tries to, it tries to decrease the pressure because I have increased it. So again, it can either shift in one direction or the other. Now, the way it works is that I have four moles on this side and I have two moles on this side, which means volume-wise this is greater than this side. So if I've increased the pressure, I want to try and turn more volume into less volume. So it's going to shift right again because this side, if I favour this, if I produce turn more of this, so if I basically I turn four moles into two moles, I'm reducing the pressure because I'm reducing the volume within my sealed container. So my yield, when I de increase the pressure, shift in this direction so my yield of methanol increases the reason for that my explanation is that there are more molecules um, on left 
or you could say there are less on the right. Therefore, equilibrium shifts right to oppose the increase in pressure. Now in this case, let's, let's get these two answers up. Talk about your yield. You've got an initial statement. If it's temperature, we're going to say which direction is exothermic, which direction is endothermic, whatever. If it's pressure we're talking about, we're going to say where are the more or the less moles um, of, of, the, of the gases. And then finally, in both, we're going to talk about which way the equilibrium has shifted. Now the difficult thing is deciding which way is it going to shift. Is it going to shift right or is it going to shift left? And that's the key thing. So I'll say it once more. Temperature. If I decrease temperature, it will shift into the exothermic direction. If I increase temperature, it will shift, the equilibrium this is, will shift into the endothermic direction. Whichever way that be, you have to decide from the reaction whether that's right or left on both cases. In terms of the pressure, when I increase the pressure, it will shift to the side with the less number of moles or molecules. When I I'm trying to remember which one I just said there. I think I said when I increase the pressure, it shifts to the one with the less number. When I decrease the pressure, it will do the opposite, and it will shift to the side that has the more number of moles or molecules. And these are the kind of answers you need to be right. I mean, you just switch these around. You could say yield decreases. If I just said temperature increases, yield decreases. The forward reaction is endothermic. would be fine still. Equilibrium, sh equilibrium shifts to the left. <coughs> excuse me. To oppose the increase in temperature. Blah, 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 blah. So you're just changing this answer. Um, depending on what we've got each time, so depending on what you're asked in the question or what information you're given. Um, at this point, I would I would like to say, well, what happens if I add a catalyst? So if I add a catalyst, you could say, what happened to the position of equilibrium if I add a catalyst? Well, nothing. A catalyst will do nothing to um, the the position of the equilibrium. It will remain where it would be anyway. Um, because what happens is it speeds up the forward reaction and the back reaction equally. So a catalyst speeds both reactions equally. The other thing though, it does mean though, equilibrium will be reached faster. And that's a very key point. So it will not change the position of equilibrium, but you can reach equilibrium fast, which is obviously, again, good in industry, because if you want to get to an equilibrium, you want to get there quicker. Um, so a catalyst will help, but it will not help you increase or decrease the yield of the thing you particularly want. Okay, going to look at one more example now, um, and this is of uh, the hub process. So nitrogen reacting with... Um, Hydrogen, I completely forgot what it was called then, to produce me ammonia. And I have, I'll use a different colour, I have a enthalpy change, which is this minus 92.4 kilojoules per mole. So 92.4 kilojoules per mole. Minus 92.4 kilojoules per mole. And this should all be gases, by the way. Sorry, I don't put that there. Normally it's a little G symbol by that. So this is the hard process the production of ammonia for, uh, through the reaction of nitrogen and of hydrogen using an iron catalyst so again the catalyst it's not going to change the yield but it is going to speed up the time it takes to get to equilibrium and it's going to keep some of those running costs down a little bit um, in this case ideal situation what would we want for the highest yield now of we want a high yield of ammonia what would we do well let's look at pressure first where are the lower number of moles well this is the lower number of moles this time so this is the lowest number so if I increase the pressure the position of equilibrium would shift to the right therefore give me more so ideally so theoretical conditions for this is for maximum yield of ammonia high pressure this is an endo. Is this the exothermic? It's just similar as before. This is the exothermic direction. Okay, left to right is exothermic. That means if I want to increase the yield of of ammonia, if I want to shift the equilibrium to the right, I want to decrease the temperature because that will favour the exothermic reaction. So decrease temperature. Actually, I should answer that exactly similar to what I did before. So rather than just decrease, say low. So a high pressure and a low temperature are my ideal um, conditions and this graph shows that. So this graph shows exactly 
what I've just said. It's a bit weird to read, but just take it that each line separate. So looking at this, uh, let's look at this top line here. Lower temperature. Okay, so we're going from high, low to high, each line being at a different temperature. So the same pressure scale, but we're using different temperature each time. So the lowest temperature gives us the highest yield. We can see that straight away. The highest temperature gives us the lowest yield. And we can see that the highest yield is this point here, which is at the higher pressure and the higher temperature. Sorry, higher pressure and lower temperature. And again, the lowest yield right down here, the lowest temperature. Uh, if we put this point here, for example, rather than zero, then this is a, a lower pressure, higher temperature. So this graph shows us exactly what we'd expect. Now actually, in reality, the the, the conditions aren't maybe what you'd think. We use a uh, temperature of about, so reality, and a pressure of about, and a pressure of about 200 atmospheres. And again, iron catalyst over there, that sticks true. Just whoop, there he is. So, we're looking somewhere down here. This is this is where our conditions are taken. It's a yield of about 25-ish percent. I think actually in reality, I think it's even lower than that, about 15 percent. But either way, it's it's low. We could be getting a yield of of 70 percent or higher if we ramped. If we had an even lower temperature or we had an even higher pressure, we could find this this line might continue upwards. And before you know it, we could be up here at the sort of the 100 percent region. So why would we bother using a higher temperature? And and actually a lower pressure well the the answer really is that yes these these conditions are theoretically great but actually in reality they're not they're not ideal the reason being that low temperature um if you think about the gcse low temperature slow rate so it's all very well we get a hundred percent yield but it takes us three weeks to get there now we're not, we're not waiting that long we want to sell our ammonia we want to make more so a lower yield actually will in terms of money, will yield us more money um, because we can we have a higher sort of turnover, if you like, of the equilibrium um, or of the, of the of the reaction, if that kind of makes sense. High pressure is all very well, but it's very costly. Um, expensive equipment, um, particularly if you think about high, if you're using pressures of 400, 500, 600 atmospheres, you need equipment that can that can withstand that pressure, and therefore. You know that's costing you money. So actually, you're getting a really good yield, but you're spending most of your money on this equipment. It's pointless. So actually, by dropping this pressure down and by ramping the temperature up, we get a higher rate of reaction. So we only get a 20-ish percent yield, something like that. But actually, that makes us more money than this. So this is these are classed as compromise conditions, and it's just so. Again, I just thought it was worth sort of mentioning because this, particularly this bit here, the slow rate of reaction and the kind of costly aspect. Don't just say it costs a lot, give a reason why. Costly because of expensive equipment. These do come up every now and again. Um, I just thought it was worth throwing in there. Uh, but actually, there you have it. Um, that is the the entirety of the equilibria um, topic. And, and the key thing really of this is is making sure that you learn these answers. Or certainly, not that you have a good understanding, but you also word your answer. It's annoying having to do that, but you you word your answer in the in the correct way. Particularly this second or this last line on each of these, saying that the equilibrium shifts in x direction to oppose the increase or decrease in temperature, increase or decrease in pressure. That's very very important. Um, as always, any comments, any any problems, please do um, put them in the comments below. And there you have it. It's equilibrium.